Introduction Almighty help us. What has happened, Grandpa? Why are you looking sad? Oh, children, storms and cyclones are continuously occurring on the earth and causing destruction all over. Dear children, are you aware of the cyclones? No, Grandpa. What is it? Cyclones are basically storms which are generated in the ocean due to high speed winds and air pressure difference. Are they very dangerous to our life? Yes, children. In October 1999, Orisa was hit twice by the cyclones with wind speed of 200 km per hour and 260 km per hour. Many people died and many became homeless. Agriculture, transport, communication and electric supply were badly affected. I think we should have more knowledge about it. You are right, Radhika. I am also very keen to learn about it. Yes, children. You must read about such events. Come, children. Let us learn about winds, storm and cyclones. Objectives at the end of this lesson, you'll be able to Define wind Explain air pressure Identify the application of air pressure in our everyday life Understand wind circulation over the globe Explain monsoon winds, thunderstorm, cyclone and tornado Discuss the effects of cyclones and the safety measures to control it What is wind? Ankit is trying to fly a kite, but the kite is not flying. What does he need to do? It is very simple. He should fly the kite in the direction of air. Moving air helps the kite to climb in the sky. We call this moving air as wind. Now the question comes, what causes air to move? Well, it is caused by differences in air pressure within our atmosphere. Air exerts pressure. Have you ever thought what helps our lungs to inhale the air? Well, it is air pressure which forces the air into our lungs when we breathe in. Earth's atmosphere is made up of number of gases. These gases exert pressure on the Earth's surface. We call this pressure as air pressure. The Earth's atmosphere is 80 km deep as we move upwards, the air pressure decreases. Air also pushes pressure on our body. Activity Let's perform an activity to verify that air exerts pressure. Take a tin can filled with half water and heat it on a burner. After the water starts boiling, blow out the burner and immediately put the lid on the can. Then put that can carefully in a wash basin and pour water over it. What do you observe? The shape of the can gets distorted. Do you know why this is so? As water is poured over the can, some steam in the can condensed into water which reduces the amount of air inside the can. That means air pressure inside the can decreases than the pressure exerted by the air from outside the can. As a result, the can gets distorted, so by this activity you learned that air exerts pressure. Wind and Air Pressure Do you know that high-speed winds can blow away the weak roofs of buildings? High-speed winds are accompanied by reduced air pressure. Let us see an activity. Take a piece of paper and crumple it into the small ball. Now hold the empty glass bottle and place the paper ball just inside its mouth. Try to blow the ball to force into the bottle. Observe carefully. The paper ball is not moving inside the bottle. Do you know why? Actually, when we blow into the mouth of the bottle, the air near the mouth has higher speed. This decreases the pressure there. The air pressure inside the bottle is higher than near the bottle. When we blow the ball inside the bottle, the air inside the bottle pushes the ball out. So children, we concluded that increased wind speed is accompanied by reduced air pressure. Wind Circulation I have one question in my mind. Can I ask you, Grandpa? Yes, Radhika. 
Tell me. How does the wind circulate on the earth? It is very easy to understand. The warm air is light, so it rises up at a place, as a result of which air pressure of that area gets lowered. The cold air from the surrounding areas rushes in to fill its space. Energy from the sun heats the earth's surface. Equator is the region which receives maximum heat from the sun than the polar regions. The air in these regions gets warm. The warmer air rises up and the colder air coming from the polar regions moves in to fill the empty space. This is how wind circulation is set up from the poles to the warmer latitudes. Self-assessment Let's check what you have learned so far. Drag and drop the correct option into its respective place. Monsoon winds. All of us get a feeling of relief from the long hot summers during the monsoon season. Let us see how this monsoon appears. During the hot summers, the land near the equator warms up very quickly. The temperature of the land is always higher than that of water in the oceans. The warm land heats the air above it. As a result, the warm air being lighter rises up and expands. This causes the winds to flow from the oceans towards the land. We call these winds as monsoon winds. The monsoon winds carry water from the oceans and bring rain. Thunderstorms Can you tell where does lightning come from? And why does lightning sometimes strike the ground? Let's find the answers. A storm with lightning and thunder is called a thunderstorm. It develops in hot, humid tropical areas like India very frequently. They are formed by the uplifting of warm and humid air. When humid air is lifted, it cools down and the moisture in the air condenses to form cloud. Water droplets in the cloud continue to grow in size. As the cloud extends further upward, water droplets fall down, creating sound and lightning. We call this event as thunderstorm. Cyclone You must have heard about cyclones. Why do we get afraid of its name? Cyclones are huge revolving storms caused by high-speed winds rotating around a central area of low air pressure. We know how a thunderstorm forms. Let us see how it becomes a cyclone. Cyclones are formed over warm oceans. The warm ocean also heats the air above it. When humid air is lifted, it cools down and forms cloud. The low air pressure created over the ocean begins to pull the clouds in, and the clouds begin to rotate due to Earth's rotation. These clouds continue to grow larger, and begin spinning more. The swirling winds rotate faster and faster, forming a huge circle which can be up to 2,000 km across. The center of a cyclone is a calm area. It is called the eye of a storm. As the cyclone builds up, it begins to move. Cyclones are extremely destructive. It can lift the water as high as 3 to 12 meters. As a result, the seawater enters the low-lying coastal areas causing loss of life and property. It also causes heavy floods. As a result, fertility of a soil can also be reduced. Now it has become to monitor cyclones with the help of satellites and radars. Tornado A tornado is a violent rotating funnel cloud of air that reaches from the sky to the ground. The most violent tornado can lead to tremendous destruction. It can blow away large buildings, uproot trees and hurl vehicles hundreds of yards. They may form within cyclones. The eastern coast of India is more vulnerable to cyclones than the western coast. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned. Moving air is called wind. Air around us exerts pressure. Pressure exerted by air is called air pressure. Air expands on heating 
and contracts on cooling. Warm air is lighter than the colder air. A warm air rises up, air pressure at that place decreases and the cooler air moves to that place. An even heating on the earth causes wind circulation. Monsoon winds flow from the oceans towards the land. These winds carry water from the oceans and bring rain. A storm with lightning and thunder is called a thunderstorm. Cyclones are huge revolving storms caused by high-speed winds and air pressure difference. A tornado is a violent rotating funnel cloud of air that reaches from the sky to the ground. 